years of early morning fishing expeditions on the Atlantic Ocean had taken their toll on the Sea Emperor. The white paint that covered most of the ship had been diluted to faded grey, and the once bright red trim was now a tired orange. A small cabin with reinforced, salt-stained glass windows sat in the middle of the vessel, like a mini lighthouse. Only the cabin was shrouded in darkness. There was no sign of life. Hello, on board, Mike shouted, breaking the silence and obviously startling Gary, much to his amusement. He grinned his childish grin. No reply. Probably all stoned, he added, throwing a rope over to the craft. Hello, Sea Emperor, it's the Coast Guard. Just the sound of water sloshing against the bow. As Gary fastened the rope joining the two boats, Mike disappeared into the cruiser's cabin and reappeared moments later, carrying two flashlights. He handed one to Gary, and then with a deep sigh, he climbed off the rescue boat and onto the trawler. Nothing appeared to be out of order. In fact, everything seemed very much in its place, right up to the gleaming surfaces of the deck. Hello? The deathly silence continued to cocoon them both, and the nervousness that taunted Gary had now spread over to Mike. Enough to give you the creeps, innit? he asked, wiping the beam of his flashlight over the deck. You're not kidding. Hello? he called out. His voice was devoured by the expanse that surrounded them, but it gave them nothing in return. What about inside the cabin? Mike suggested, as the beam of his flashlight revealed the door cavity. Both men entered as their lights scared back the darkness. Doesn't look like much has been going on here, Mike said. Nah, Gary replied, distracted. Where the hell is everybody? Could they have fallen overboard during the storm? All of them. Is there anybody on board? He shouted into the gloom. Let's take a look down there, Gary said, shining light over the wooden steps that led into the bowels of the vessel. The compartment was relatively small. Twin bunk beds, a couple of battered lockers, and a screwed-down table surrounded by benches. In the corner stood a gas stove, normally used to boil water and reheat the occasional stew that had been lovingly prepared by one of the fishermen's wives. Everything looked fine, as if the vessel had simply navigated itself here without its crew. Looks like they just decided to abandon ship, Mike said. Yeah, but they thought they'd leave the place nice and clean for when we got here, Gary replied, scanning the rest of the claustrophobic space. What do you mean? Didn't you notice the deck? It was practically polished. Mike's eyebrows lifted. What are you saying? That they decided to clean up before diving overboard? I'm not saying anything specific. I'm just saying that everything looks too damn... The words escaped him. Let's just tow her back to shore. Let the police handle it, Mike said, starting back up the wooden steps. But he stopped when Gary suddenly grabbed his arm, making him jump. What the... He didn't finish his sentence, for he had turned around to see his partner shining the light of his torch to his face, spotlighting a hushing finger over his lips. That same finger moved and pointed across the room at one of the lockers. Gary had heard something. He wasn't quite sure what, but the noise was definitely coming from within one of the lockers. Mike descended the two steps quietly. Then, as if guided by telepathic communication, the two men moved in synchronization. Neither of them knew what exactly they were going to find in the locker, but both made their approach a cautious one. As they drew near, they could see that the metal actually rattled at regular intervals. Slowly, Flashlights aimed like weapons in front of them. They took up positions on either side of the cabinet. Gary held up five fingers and mouthed the numbers in descending order as he closed each one. Five. Mike glanced at him nervously, then at the locker again. Four. Rattle. Three. The boat groaned and began to sway as a gale blew up outside. Two. Hearts pounding. Breaths held. Rattle. One. One. 